to the cloud. Right, so we are recording now. So uh, thank you again, everybody for joining. Will the, the point of this webinar is to help you contact your members of Congress to talk about your concerns and issues around uh, tax. Uh, so I think a lot of you may already be aware, but um, Americans living outside of the United States face, face a lot of levels of tax discrimination that um, other uh, um, expats living um, around the world that are citizens of other countries don't experience. Um, it's uh, pretty unique that the US taxes its citizens regardless of location in the world. Um, so the purpose of the tax advocacy work that Democrats Abroad does is to raise awareness with Congress and to um, affect change and ideally change the tax code so that we are not unfairly double taxed and having to double file. Um, so one of our key um, issues that we advocate for is a switch from citizenship based taxation to residency based taxation. So that is one of the things that I will be talking about that you can write to your member of Congress about. So uh, just as a disclaimer, uh, before we get into things, this is not uh, so Democrats abroad uh, cannot provide individual tax advice. Uh, sorry, I am going to read all of this because I do need to be very thorough and clear. <laughs> so advice requires consideration of your individual circumstances and needs, none of which can be done at this event. We are not tax lawyers, accountants, or, or advisors. Please consult a professional tax advisor, accountant, return preparer when addressing your personal tax matters. Uh, DA UK does not endorse or recommend companies or individuals attending or hosting this event. The views expressed at the event are those of the respective individuals and companies, not DA UK. No liability is accepted by DA UK for the opinions expressed or for any errors or admissions expressed around matters of tax in any country, your financial planning, or your legal obligations. If you are in need of tax advice, you can consult the American Citizens Abroad Tax Return Preparer Directory to find an advisor or tax return preparer near you or providing online services to meet your needs and budget though buyers always need beware. Um, so we have that out of the way. So basically what I'm looking to walk you through is um, why she, should you be talk, contacting your members of Congress? Um, how to figure out who your members of Congress are? I know sometimes it can be frustrating trying to figure out who they actually are, who represents you. Um, does contacting your representatives actually work? I'm gonna talk about some examples where it has. Uh, what methods you, you should use to contact your members of Congress. Um, I'm going to use MOCs as shorthand because members of Congress is a big mouthful. Uh, so uh, what methods should you email them? Should you snail mail them? Um, should you call them? You know, we'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages of all of those. And also, uh, finally, what should you say in your message? to Congress, um, to your representatives. And um, even though this webinar is tax focused, um, so we're gonna be talking about our tax advocacy issues. So the issues that we're worried about most around taxation. Um, a lot of what we're talking about here can be applied to any issue that you care about. Um, and you can contact your members of Congress about anything you like, basically, that you want them to know about. So, uh, so hopefully that, so that's the context for the webinar. We're a relatively small group, so I don't mind if you have any questions or anything you want to jump in. Uh, please feel free uh, and, and just put your hand up or, or jump in. I, I don't mind. So are there any questions at this point? No? Okay, I'll go to the next slide then. So uh, why should you contact your members of Congress? Uh, does anybody have any thoughts or ideas around that? Well, they're the only, they're the ones who make the decisions on U.S. laws. Yeah, that's a good reason. It's, we're talking about changing U.S. laws, who changes them? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so uh, MOCs uh, also, they're, they're elected, so we, we live in a democracy. We have 
uh, voted them in to represent us. And uh, so we as the voting public uh, ha have a right to express our views and opinions on how good of a job they're doing. And also to share with them exactly what we care about and, and why, and why we think that they should care about it and do something about it. So uh, your interests might be different compared to someone that has lived in the US their whole lives, but regardless, you know, the way that the system is set up is that you vote based on the last state or district or, or wherever you, you vote based on the last place that you lived in in the US. So um, regardless of however long ago you lived there, that is your representative. That is the, that is the person who, or the, or the people who represent you in Congress. And if you don't contact them to tell them what you care about, or even that you exist, um, how are they supposed to know, right? Um, and more importantly, the more they hear about a particular topic, the more and faster they're going to do something about it. So for example, um, like one, one of the biggest issues that, you know, during, during the Trump era was when um, Trump's policy of separating children from their parents at the US-Mexico border. And after the news broke about that, there were hundreds of thousands of Americans contacting Trump and their, their MOCs in outrage about it. And shortly after that, um, even though Trump got away with a lot of different things, he, he ended the, the policy of family separation because there was such an uproar. Um, and that happened in a very, very short period of time. And one of the ideal things that we're looking for is we're looking for more Americans abroad to, to contact their members of Congress, to have their voices be heard, because the more of us they hear from, the more pressure they'll, they'll get, and ideally the faster they will act. So that's kind of the, the philosophy behind what we're, we're trying to accomplish here. Um, and then, uh, so yes, so uh, anyway, I forgot to go through. So it, why should you contact your members of Congress? Well, it's your right. It's your right to, because you, you, um, they, they represent you um, and you potentially voted them in. Uh, I, I know that's not always the case, but and hopefully, hopefully you did. <laughs> and um, they want to hear, they actually do genuinely want to hear from their constituents about issues that you care about. Um, except for Mitch McConnell, I have to say. <laughs> uh, but that's a discussion for may maybe afterwards. And um, uh, I don't know uh, if there's anything else. I'm sure there's a lot of other reasons. But um, anyway, I think I've co covered the base on there. So isn't it, isn't it also also the case that in very tight elections, I know it's certainly where I'm, where I'm registered to vote in CD3, that those absolutely absentee ballots that actually put some of the some of the members of Congress into Congress. Mm. For example, the night when I live in voting in New Jersey, it's not Congressional District 3, which is Andy Kim. Andy Kim was losing in when he in the first election and also the recount election until the absentee ballots were, were were counted, and those absentee ballots included votes from myself and from my wife and, and others who uh, were outside of the United States, and we put them over the top. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think the often um, the way that Democrats abroad puts it is that we're the margin of victory. So we were the margin of victory for the Georgia um, Senate seats earlier in the year, and also in uh, the Arizona. Um, so we, our, our votes really do count and do make a difference. So, uh, that's, so, you know, as a, so when you're, when you're approaching it as a constituent, um, you can say, you can kind of say like, oh, I voted for you. It kind of helps. It, it kind of depends it, it, in a way. It's another way of adding pressure to say like, I voted for you do what I want you to do. Cause I voted for you. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that when we talk about what to write. Um, so uh, yeah, great, great point. Thank you. Um, so does contacting your representatives actually work? Uh, well, yes, actually it does. Cause um, there's a lot of, this is a really good article I recommend 
um, reading if you can. Um, I don't know if maybe we can put the link in the, or Charlie, if you could put the link in the chat box or maybe you have already, sorry, I can't see the chat box. <laughs> but, it is um, in there already. Okay, cool, thank you. Um, so uh, yeah, I and like more often than not, we get a lot of questions about like, why haven't we passed residency-based taxation um, yet? And it really is because we haven't had enough Americans abroad contacting their, their MOCs. And um, when we've gone to DC in the past, and we're also talking to members of Congress on an ongoing basis anyway, um, but a lot of the time we sit down in a meeting and we ask them, how many people have you heard from? And most of them say, will say like a handful that's really not enough for them to prioritize um, our issues as something that needs to happen right now, even though it is a very urgent issue. So, and, and I understand why a lot of people don't contact their members of Congress. Uh, it's because there's like a lot of people who are very fearful of the tax system. They're fear, fearful of the IRS. So they don't want to say anything because um, they think that even though they've not done anything, um, they still think the IRS is gonna come and hunt them down and throw them in jail or slap a big fine on, on them or something like that. And it, that's not how contacting your member of Congress works. They're, they're there to represent you. Um, you know, Just like how uh, a lot of the time people will go to their members of Congress because they have nowhere else to go because they might be having an immigration problem. You can, um, I, I've, I've helped numerous people escalate to the members of Congress around their tax issues. So there's, uh, you know, the, they're there to support you and help you. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I think one of the other problems is that they're a lot more likely to do something that's happening in their backyard, like in their constituency or their state, um, rather than prioritizing something that feels really far away. So, uh, part of contacting them is making it more real by telling your story and, and being like, look, I'm a voter there. I grew up, you know, there, or I lived there for a long time and you represent me and um, this is my story and I need your help. So that really, those personal stories really help bring the issue to life and get them to take action as well. So uh, this, this is kind of, oh, I may have answered my question already, but um, uh, qu kind of a quiz question. So if you are, if you are non-compliant, so that means that you haven't filed your US federal tax return with the IRS, because statistically speaking, a majority of Americans abroad don't file because it's just too complicated. They don't know how to do it. Most people, you know, it's not like when you leave the US, you get an exit interview where they explain how to be an American abroad. You know, there's a lot of things that are very unfair about the system. So it's not their fault that they're non-compliant. But um, anyway, if you're non-compliant and you contact your members of Congress about tax, could you be red flagged by the IRS? What does anybody, yes or no? I think, I think I gave it away already. So the answer is no, 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 they are not going to red flag you. Um, that is no, you have no reason not to contact your members of Congress is basically the bottom line. I, I have genuinely had people say to me, really genuinely scared saying, oh, but I can't say anything because then they're gonna, they're gonna report me. And I'm like, they're not gonna report you. Like they're, they're there to help you. Like that's the whole point. Um, so uh, yeah, so you should definitely 100% contact your members of Congress. So just to, we're gonna go back to like high school, like US government 101 here, just to kind of break it down. So who represents you in Congress? You have two senators uh, in the Senate and you have one house representative. Uh, the, uh, let's see, for, tax legislation in particular though, um, it actually says in the constitution that all bills for raising revenue shall originate in the House of Representatives. So if you're limited on time in terms of trying to figure out who to contact um, and um, you only wanna contact one, I really recommend that you start with your House representative. Um, but keep in mind that um, 
once tax legislation passes in the House, it also then needs to pass in the Senate. And it's pretty easy to contact all three of them with the same message at the same time. So I'd encourage you to do all of the three at the same time if you can. Um, I'm going to show you a tool which will allow you to do that, but um, just trying to kind of explain the different levels and, and how it works. Um, and uh, yeah, so like all the tax bills will be passed in the House first before they then go to the Senate. So that's one of the reasons why we encourage people to contact their members of Congress first, because that's where it starts. Are there any, any questions on that part or is that clear? Okay, cool. So how to find your members of Congress. Um, your, uh, you can just go to um, whoismyrepresentative.com and enter your voting postcode. You need to put in where you vote from or the, the place that you last lived in the US. Sometimes when you use this tool um, or this website, you get more than one house representative because the districts are divided. They're not divided up by postcode or, or sorry, by zip code. They're, they're divided up in crazy different ways because of gerrymandering and all of that. So um, if you get more than one on whoismyrepresentative.com, you then, I recommend that you go to house.gov and then you enter your zip code and your full address and then it'll actually give you the one um, representative in the house. Uh, but who is my representative.com will definitely tell you who your senators are. Um, so that will that will help you get there. Uh, okay. And um, they will you can also get their phone number, their address, and the website of the member of Congress to write to them on that particular uh, website as well. So it'll give you all of the contact information. So what method should you use to contact? Should you use the phone? Should you use email or snail mail? Um, basically the answer is, you can pick whichever one works best for you, basically. Um, and, uh, but kind of like a high level basic rule is the phone is good for trying to have a conversation because a lot of the time, especially in the, in, um, in the house, uh, they have a smaller staff for a smaller number of staff for each member of Congress. And like, they'll actually have like a receptionist pick up the phone uh, or, they might actually share the phone responsibility. So it might be a legislative director one day, it might be like an aide the, other, the next day, you know, it could be, uh, you know, they could be juggling a phone responsibility. You never know who's gonna answer the phone basically um, when you call their mainline number. Um, so phone is good for trying to have a conversation and getting information faster. Email though is good for keeping a record. So if you really wanna make sure that what you're saying goes on the record, like, that they get it in writing, send, you can send an email. Uh, but we're, we're gonna talk about how you can't, why you can't send an email, but how you can send an email. I'll explain that in a minute. <laughs> um, and, oh, so, is there anything else there? You can, um, you can also call them as much as you want. Uh, I would, I know some people that call them every day and leave a voicemail every single day for one issue, one issue. I wish they did it for this issue, but anyway, they, they do it for every single day. Um, there isn't really, uh, you can do it until you're blue in the face, basically. No one's stopping you, nor should they, because they're your representative. This is a democracy. You're allowed to, you know, contact them. Um, there is only one case I'm aware of where somebody contacted them too much, uh, which was kind of like they were calling them like every hour of every day and it was really obsessive kind of thing. So I don't think anybody here is going to do that. But just to let you know, there's only one case in the courts that where they contacted their member of Congress too much. Only one. <laughs> so um, how to call the US for free? I get this question a lot from people. By the way, um, you can also use this method to call the IRS, uh, which is more often than not, you're gonna spend at least an hour on the phone 
if you're going to call the IRS, if you have an hour of time. I know not everybody does, but um, uh, I know there's some people here that aren't in the UK, but I'm sure there might be like an equivalent. Uh, but zip, I use zip call. So basically it gives me free minutes from my, uh, my mobile, my UK mobile phone. And um, I also get free minutes to other countries as well, but you can call uh, and it just goes towards your minute allocation. Um, again, I think there's probably like an equivalent of that for the country that you live in. Um, if not, you can always use Skype. Skype is like one cent per minute. It's super cheap to use in order to make international calls. So um, that's, that's another way. Another, um, you can also make free calls through Google Voice if you have a Google Voice account set up already as well. Um, I'm not sure, is, is there anybody else that knows another way to make free calls or an easier way to make calls to the US from internationally? No? No, there okay. Many, many, many uh, calling in Canada, many, there are many Canada the US calling plans from different providers. So if you've got family members in the US, you, you tend to have those plans anyway. So mm. you, you, it doesn't cost you, you already have those plans. You, you use them to call whoever you need to call in the US. Oh, great. Okay, good. That's good. Yeah, I know of a few like international family plans too. Um, so it just depends on what plan you have, basically. One, can I interrupt for a second? Uh, Marina is asking, does zip call work outside of the UK, like in Spain? Uh, I don't know. Um, maybe check their website. I, um, I only know about using it in the UK. I'm not aware of using it in other countries, though. Um, but another question I get from people is that when they go to their members of Congress website, like more often than not, they have lots of offices. So they'll have multiple offices in their district as, as well as in Washington, DC. For this purpose, you want to call their Washington, DC office number. So their congressional um, office, because we're talking about the, the taxes are on a federal level. Um, so we wanna be talking to their congressional staff so that's why you call that number. Okay, email, how do you email them? There is no email address for any member of Congress. It's really super frustrating, let me tell you. Uh, but one of the easiest ways that you can actually email um, is there's this website called democracy.io and it's actually really great because what it does is you put in your US voting address, it then brings up your members of Congress. Um, again, you might have that issue where it shows you like multiple ones for the House, but I, I've already showed you how to figure out which one is your House rep. So you should be able to figure out which one is yours. You go through, you pick them out, you then copy and paste in your message that you want to send, and then you click send, and then it sends it to all three all at the same time. So it's really super easy and makes it a lot easier. see if I have anything else I wanted to say on that point. So um, again, uh, if you're trying to send something that you want to get in writing uh, and uh, you email is good for if you're short on time and you want to make sure that they've logged the issue. Um, Something else to keep in mind is that every single call, voicemail, email, um, snail mail, even fax, I know people still fax, it's crazy. Um, for all of the issues, they, they track all of that. So like they'll put it into like a bucket of saying like, okay, people who contacted us about this tax issue, they log all of it um, and they use that in order to prioritize where they spend their, their time and effort. So again, the more your MOCs hear from you about our tax issues, the higher they're gonna prioritize it. Okay, so what to say. So here's a draft script um, of what you can say. Uh, and it's really pretty basic. It just says, hi, my name is you know, Rebecca, and I vote in your district. I live in uh, the United Kingdom. Like other Americans living abroad, I'm required to file taxes both in the US and in the UK. And then there's just kind of a high level information that you can give them about 
why Americans abroad are struggling with um, the tax issues and the different rafts of dis tax discrimination that we face. Um, what's really going to help add to this, though, is if you add a personal story, um, the more you personalize this, the more meaningful it's going to be. If um, a member of Congress receives a bunch of template like scripts like this, where uh, they all say the same thing, they're going to pick up on that. Um, that's not to say that it doesn't hurt. Um, it's just that a personalized message goes a lot further. Um, but this, this is more for you to use if you're short on time, basically. You can use our template messages to, um, if, if you just don't have very much time. Um, and uh, yeah, and also it's really helpful to add specific questions um, to prompt a reply to your letter. Um, if you send a letter and you don't ask any questions, it's not really going to force them to reply to you. So you want to add questions like, uh, will you support a residency-based tax bill if it comes to a vote? Or can you please clarify your stance on residency-based taxation? Um, or you can add something even stronger, maybe not this year because it's not a big election year, but next year for the midterms, you could say, you could be like, I plan to vote for the candidate who will support a switch to residency-based taxation if you know they're up for re-election anytime soon. Um, so that's also something that you can like keep in mind as well. Uh, are there yeah. any questions? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Question I have with the with the residency based taxation is why should my congressman, my 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 elected representatives care? Uh, in other words, what's in it for the for the for the ninety five percent of the voters who live in the United States? Mm -hmm if this method is changed to citizenship-based taxation? In other words, does it, would it uh, cut down the IRS cost? Would it enable most Americans to get their tax even better? In other words, in other words, what's, what's, the, in other words what's the overall gain to, to most Americans and to, the, and to elected officials if the change was made from, from uh, CBT to RBT? Yeah, so I mean, that's the great thing about RBT is that there's pretty much no material change to any Americans' lives in the U.S. In other words, would it, in other words, bottom line, would it, imp in other words, would it improve um, the ability, would it, would it make any positive difference on 95% of the Americans? Uh, it will make a difference for Americans living abroad it will have no material impact on Americans living in the US. But that's, that's one of the great selling points of RBT is because it has more of an impact on Congress. So yes, the argument of it will reduce the uh, amount of filings and administrative burden of having to process filings and returns that where there's no tax due. Um, it will also help in terms of pointing so at the moment, there's this um, big misconception in Congress where they think that people living overseas are living overseas to evade taxes, um, when we all know that that is not the case. We all know that we were, we moved abroad because, uh, you know, mo most Americans move abroad for love um, or for work or for education or, you know, lots of different reasons we move abroad. Very, very few people actually move abroad to um, avoid paying US tax. Um, so it's very much about removing that misconception from Congress to help point them in the right direction, to help them actually find the tax cheats, because um, they continuously are going after the wrong people. And that's a waste of IRS resources as well. So helping them steer them in the right direction based on what's required for filings, how they're spending IRS resources, um, all, of, all of those kind of go into the same camp. Does that okay. help? Yeah, I think if I maybe, if you can produce something and send it around there to address those particular perceptions, you know, it's 
just outline the benefits. In other words, what's in it, what's in it for them, which is, okay, let's go simplify IRS bureaucracy. Well, hey, everybody wants to see simplified IRS bureaucracy, quote unquote, let's put the internal back into the IRS, let's put internal into the IRS. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's an easy enough selling point. Uh, okay, makes it easier, simpler, less bureaucracy overall. And then also address then the perception that no people, Americans living abroad aren't, aren't doing it to evade taxes. So if somehow you can, if you can put together some kind of factual information like that, which we can put into our letters, that would certainly help make the stronger case uh, it, it, and to help get our get the attention of our elected officials, which means they, okay, listen to me complaining about this. Say, hey, this is going to help everybody else by simplifying the IRS. It addresses this perception issue. Yeah. Um, so if you, uh, on our website, on the tax blog, um, we've been publishing all, all of the, uh, the Democrats abroad statements that have been submitted for all of the tax related um hearings that have been taking place in the House and the Senate. Um, all of those letters have more technical yeah. arguments and details as to why we need to pass residency-based taxation. So if you want to, okay. if you want to go into more detail like that, then I would yeah. recommend going and referencing some of those. Yeah, but if you can put together like a simple one sheet or just what you just said now, which is ex excellent, but something like that, and we look at a screen, something which we could utilize in our arguments and making the case for uh, residency-based taxation. That would be great help. Ah, um, what I can do is I will, once I'm done sharing my screen, I will drop my residency-based tax one-sheeter. Uh, it's a one-sheet that I've shared with Congress in the past. So I'll, I'll drop that in the chat box uh, once I'm done sharing my screen and I can see things again. <laughs> Um, okay. Okay. Great. Um, just, but, okay. And just a couple of things too, because there are a couple of other people that have asked a question or made a oh, comment. Oh, sorry. Oh. Sorry. I can't see the chat box. Yes, please. That's, that's right. So we have a query from Ann Westcott who says it looks like a U.S. phone number is a required field to email via democracy.io. Mm -hmm. Is that is that correct? Yes. Um, so you can. Uh, you, I put in my mom's phone number. So um, I know some other people that put in the phone number of their favorite bakery back home. Um, so it's, it's really kind of up to you. They're not going to call you. Okay. Uh, and there's a comment from Trish Karn who says, I have used the contact me on my senator's websites, except they ask for a telephone number and don't like international numbers. Yeah. 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 You have to put in a U.S. number. Um, and this is one of our other big gripes with Congress. Uh, there's only one that I'm aware of that accepts um, international addresses and phone numbers. So uh, that kind of shows you how much they're thinking about us, right? That's the thing. But yeah, so you have to use a, your US voting address in order to submit your, uh, your email and you have to use a US phone number. So um, anyway, hopefully I've given you some suggestions of what you can do to get around that. W were there any other questions? Yes. I have one, I'm just writing it. Can I, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I'd like to know what actual uh, motions have been taken already that we could reference when we write to these rest representatives. Is, mm -hmm. there, is there a name of a proposal? Um, who have you contacted in Congress until now? And what other organizations are doing the same thing as we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, there has not been a residency-based tax proposal introduced in this Congress. Um, another big issue that comes up often is um, FATCA. So there is a, uh, a FATCA same country exemption um, bill that has been introduced every single Congress for, I think it's like the last four Congresses or something like that. Um, it has not been introduced yet for this Congress. Um, but that one is by um, Carolyn Maloney, who is the um, uh, chair for the Americans Abroad, the Congressional Americans Abroad Caucus. Um, there, uh, what was your other question? 
uh, other organizations. So yeah, so there's um, other like, so this is pretty much a, a, a nonpartisan issue. Like everybody agrees, all of the Amer like American abroad organizations agree that we should pass residency-based taxation. So um, that's a huge selling point for Congress as well. Um, is that there's a consensus with Americans living abroad, regardless of political affiliation. Um, there is a nonpartisan um, organization called American, Cit American Citizens Abroad, um, who are very much in line with a lot of the things that we that Democrats abroad talks about. There's another organization called uh, I'm going to butcher it. It's ARO. It's A A R O is the acronym. Um, I think it stands for American. Uh, American Association of Overseas, of Residents Overseas, I think that's it. Anyway, it's AARO, A-A-R-O. Um, they also have um, were a lot of very similar proposals to what we've proposed. So um, those are other organizations that you can, you can reference as well. Are they actually active and are they writing and are they doing all these things that we're going to do now? They so I, I, from what I understand, they have also been submitting um, submissions for the various different tax hearings that have been taking place. So I think they have a lot of information that what they've been doing on their websites as well. Okay. Even Republicans okay. are doing it too? Doing yeah, uh, I mean, I'm not, you know, since, since Trump is out, I haven't heard very much from them this year. Um, uh, but yes, they have also been supportive of residency-based taxation. They were calling it territorial taxation uh, a few years ago. But, you know, I always joke that like 99.9% .9 of Americans living abroad are Democrats. So Republicans overseas isn't very big. Okay. Didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, there needs to be some momentum, as you said before. There, there needs to be a, a wave of protest or something that will that will convince them that we need to do this. Yeah, yeah. I, well, actually, as it's, the gentleman before, I don't, Bob, I didn't catch his name now, but um, uh, I, I've often asked this question too: What do they get out of it? What does the, the IRS get out of it by leaving us off the hook for this? They get, you know, they. It really is minimum. There's, they have no advantage. They just uh, we're not. They don't. I don't think we matter to them. Yeah, I. I don't. I don't. The way it is, you know. I agree. I don't think we matter either. But the number of Americans living abroad is increasing. Yeah. Um. And there's this. Uh, you know. There's a pressure point that's going. The number of renunciations is increasing. Um. There's this global perception of America. Um. Mm, kind of losing the world domination in a way because of the kind of way that they're treating uh well trump trump did a good job of uh messing a lot of things up um i'm being very polite in a way here <laughs> um uh biden is trying to build bridges again with our international allies um but there's a lot of lot of damage here, and um, there's there's still, I think, a lot of problems in America that where there's a pressure point where Americans are going overseas, and this tax issue is only going to get bigger. Yeah. And so the sooner that it's fixed, the better because it will allow um, American America to actually take hold of that. Um, you know, being a world leader again. I would not say that the U.S. is a world leader in taxation right now. Here's here's the real funny part of this story, with this issue, is that you've got three political leaders, the Prime Minister of England, and the former leaders of the Green Party in Canada, and the former leaders of the Conservative Party in Canada, all have to file U.S. taxes. Boris Johnson, Elizabeth May and Andrew Scheer. Mm. So the issue is, 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 is there are so many people. It's not even funny. Well, Boris renounced, so he doesn't do it anymore. But he did pay the exit tax, and he was very upset about it. Um, 
because he had um, capital gains tax on the sale of his home and he did he was not happy I'll tell you that um, but yeah so it's it's funny that these world leaders um, they, they know about it but because they're not you know they're not in charge of the IRS they're not in charge of treasury they're not in charge of congress they um, they're they're not the ones that are best to exert influence we are actually the best ones to exert influence on this issue we're we're best placed because we're we firsthand are experiencing it um so yeah um that was a huge segue but i'm glad we went there um i'm gonna i'm gonna finish off the slides and then maybe we can we can talk some more at the end um so i was just going to talk about how when when should you call if you're going to call so um, whenever you can, depending on your schedule is the answer. Uh, I know lots of you are very busy, but this week would be great because yesterday was the expat tax filing deadline. We wanted to have a wave of phone calls, which we, which we did have, but we want to continue to have more. So if you're calling, try to call between nine to five Eastern, Eastern time, uh, which is when the Washington DC offices are open. You'll have a much higher chance of getting a person to speak to you. Um, and I know a lot of people can be really nervous when they're calling, but they, they are really friendly. Like they do get phone calls from um, like constituents all the time. So if you do get a live person, um, if, you're, if you're really nervous, I do recommend that you like write out what you wanna say. And then you can even say, I've, I've called and I've said like, I'm gonna read you what I wanna say. And then they're like, okay, go for it. And then I just read, I don't know, 200 words or so. And then they go, okay, I've written it down. Thank you. And then, and then that's it. It's as simple as that. Um, but if you don't wanna to speak to a person and you just wanna leave a voicemail, you can just call out of hours and, and leave a voicemail. No one's, no one's stopping you. You just do it however works best for you. And uh, we already talked about how often you can call. Uh, you can call as much as you please, basically. <laughs> so it's your democratic right. Um, and uh, yeah, um, so resources. So there's a link for the tax reform campaign guide um, that includes scripts for uh, specifically contacting your house representatives and your senators. Um, it has some talking points. And um, if you vote in um, a state where your member of Congress is either on the Senate Finance Committee or the um, Ways and Means Committee in the House, those are the ones that are in charge of um, passing any and writing tax bills. So those are particularly important and you should definitely write to them if they are. And I mentioned the tax um, taxation task force blog. That's where all of the recent um, submissions for all the recent tax hearings have been posted. So you can go on there and you can see what we've written and feel free to take some of our recommend reform recommendations from those um, for your own letters that you send. Um, and then if you wanna take your um, advocacy to the next level, you can actually try to start a conversation with someone in your house representative's office. Um, I've done this uh, many, many times. I have a very good relationship with Sherrod Brown's tax, um, tax legislator now. Um, so they're very informed and in the know of our tax issues. Um, but it can be as simple as calling them and say, you just say, I'm a constituent. Um, I'm concerned about the tax discrimination um, that I've personally faced. Making it personal makes it much more compelling. Um, and uh, can you pass my call or give me the email address of the person in the, um, the congressperson's office that's in charge of tax policy? And then they'll give it to you because it is your right as a constituent to have that information. And then you can send the tax legislator in that office your email rather than sending a generic one. And you can actually ask for a phone call with them if you like. Um, I'm very happy to help support that if, if you're interested in doing that. Um, and if you do get an email address, um, copy in uh, my email. It's the tax committee email there um, so that we can help you out with your conversation. And um, I've... Uh, <laughs> I have actually gotten a phone call via Kentucky, Kentucky voter uh, with uh, Mitch McConnell's office, which was pretty, uh, pretty amazing. 
it wasn't exactly stellar. <laughs> it was exactly what you thought it was, but they were polite. They said, thank you for your views. Uh, we've whitelisted your email so that it doesn't get caught in the net because you send us an international uh, phone number and address, uh, but your letters will get through to us now. And, um, and thank you for expressing your concerns. That was what they said, basically. But at, at the very least, um, they, they said they, they were heard. They were, they were obviously heard. Don't think they cared. Don't, I don't think this was staff of Mitch McConnell's office. Um, I don't think they cared, but they were polite and they said, thank you very much. And they did a phone call. So more often than not, uh, I, I know a lot of people are very frustrated, especially with Republicans, where they don't feel like they're actually being heard. Um, they, if, if, you're, if you get in there enough, they will actually do a phone call with you. Um, and you never know. A lot of Republicans are actually very supportive um, of these issues. I think, I think Mitch McConnell is the most extreme example of someone not listening. Uh, but that's, that's, that's on a lot of different levels. Um, <laughs> it's not just because he's a Republican. Um, but uh, there are, we've had a lot of really positive conversations with Republicans. They're, you know, more often than not, they're the ones that are very happy to support um, tax reform. So um, this, this sits in really well with them. So uh, don't be afraid to contact your member of Congress, even if they're a Republican. You should still definitely still reach out to them. Uh, and that's it. Question? Yeah. Um how do you formulate uh, the, I guess the actual proposal has not formally been made. We've been conversing, we've been talking to senators and, and Congress people, but is there actually a formal name for a pro proposal that we can say in this, in this conversation? So there, there was a residency-based tax um, bill that was introduced in, uh, I think it was 2018. Um, I, uh, I cannot remember the name off the top of my head, but it was introduced by uh, Congressman George Holding. Um, I'm sure I could find it here quickly if I looked. Yes, it's better than just complaining, you know, if we have a reference to something that's already been established. Yep. Um, it's... Yeah, it was 2018. It was called uh, the Tax Fairness for Americans Abroad Act. Um, so here, I'll put this in the chat box. It's an act. Okay, it's been formally written. And, um, and then I'm also going to uh, send you the one sheet. And um, let's see. Is. There we go. I've just uh, put that in the chat box as well. So that is a one sheet of, it. so one sheet is just one sheet of paper <laughs> explaining to Congress why we should pass residency-based taxation. Um, so hopefully that also helps you with some talking points for your letter as well. Also, um, Ann Westcott asks if uh, it will be possible to get a copy of the deck after the call, so that yep. that's all the suggested tests. Yep, I'll send a copy of the presentation as well as the link for the recording of this webinar. I, I've always sent my tax returns in by mail because I'm always very late from where I live. I can't do my tax re return until August almost mm. back from Italy. I yeah. Think. And um, I never get any, any um, any answer that it's been received? Or nope. That, is, that is that typical? Yep. Oh, okay. Because if you don't send it by email, then or you send you don't send it by their by the system, then you don't get any recognition that it's even arrived. If you don't hear anything, that's a good sign. <laughs> okay. That's how you know it arrived. Yeah. <gasps> that's how it works. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cool. Uh, well, are there any other last questions? I know we're at the hour now, uh, but we started a little late. So 
I'm happy to stick around to answer any other questions. But um, so is everybody ready to send their their email or that make their call and and get it out there? You've given me some ideas. You give me an idea for a letter to my, to my senator on such on introducing such bills. So I'll be in touch with you with on that. Cool. Great. Yeah. And and let me know what they say. If you get a reply back, so if you send an email and yeah. you get a reply back, please forward it to me. I'd really love to know what they're saying because um, yeah. a, a lot of them will be like, "Oh, thank you. I'm aware. I'll I'll." Uh, I'll, I'll take your views under consideration. That's the number one thing that we hear back is I'll take your views under consideration. It's just a polite way of saying like, oh, that's nice. Um, but uh, some, some people have actually gotten replies back and it was very clear that they had no idea what we were talking about. So that's a really, um, that's a really good in to ask for a phone call and be like, look, you obviously don't understand what this issue is. I want to tell you about it on a call and explain it to them and really get their attention because they get really embarrassed if they find out that they didn't understand your issue because um, they have congressional staff who are going through and uh, a lot of the time they'll batch up um, the the emails with the that are all about the same subject and then send a template email out to everybody. Um, but if they if they clearly don't understand what it is, they'll you know the you you should tell them you should be like no what are you talking about this is not about medicare like this is about tax issues <laughs> like you really don't know what this is i'm gonna do a call and tell you what it's about oh cool uh well i'm gonna i'm gonna stop recording now um i'm i'm happy to uh so yep that is the end of the webinar thank you bye thank stop. you